Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Enthusiast Experiment. My name is Mike, and I have a special guest, Yaffe, Yaffe uh, along for the ride today. We're actually going to be taste testing Habiki 17 year for the first time together uh, on camera with you guys. I'll do my typical field notes rundown of a couple of the facts of the product, and then we'll kind of get into our initial impressions and see what you guys think. Um, so it is a Japanese whiskey from the Suntory Distillery, I guess. Uh, to 750, which you could probably tell by the box size, about 43 ABV. Um, online, I saw the price ranging from like 100 to 150 dollars. I don't, I honestly don't remember what I paid for this. I bought it locally in uh, the Bay Area. Unfortunately, sorry guys. Uh, and then it seems like it's actually blended from three of the Suntory distilleries, so it's not like a single distillery beverage. So get that out of the way. Um, got the box here, and we did already take out. The actual bottle as you can see it's a super nice bottle uh it's almost like a decanter which is really cool so that's something you can easily leave on your shelf or if you have like a section for your beverages at your home doesn't look out of place uh nothing too notable on the box except uh it does say it's a japanese whiskey a harmonious blend of handcrafted select specialty aged whiskeys so again i think it's that blend of like three of their uh from three of their different distilleries and it has a little bit of the story which you guys can find online um, and I'll just give you the tasting notes. So it does say it's a, uh, amber color, a nose of peach, apricot, melon, rose, lily, and lemon leaf. And on the palate, we should be tasting toffee, black cherry, vanilla, and Mizunara. I have no idea what that is. And if the finish should be sweet, fruity, and lychee, like lychee, the fruit kind of thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we have not tried this. It is unopened. So bear with me while I do so. Yep, that was easy. All right, cool. We're not doing any ice or water or anything like that. I guess we'll taste taste it straight up to get our neat. full. Yeah, nice and neat. I'll do a little there. For Yaffe, and a little for me. And I'll let the guest taste first. So Yaffe is also an accomplished taster. <laughs> um, he's the one that conquered the uh, bourbon trail bourbon here. trail which is a lot of fun i heavily recommend it yeah totally <laughs> interesting floral notes right really sweet yeah, especially for definitely like some sweetness for no sure water in it anything stand out do you smell anything that's like um, jumping out to you not not too much, just that sweetness so like and honey, that vanilla, floral, like, yeah. a little bit of honey. Um, I'm not getting the typical like corn rice that I get out of like American whiskeys off the nose. All right, let's get in. Very smooth. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, extremely smooth. Spice on the end, down the back of the throat, but not too but much. Not, like over, not overpowering. Yeah. You can definitely um, taste the oak, but it's not like crazy. And it's super smooth. Yeah, you get some oak. I get a little bit of vanilla. Um, it's thicker than a traditional whiskey, I guess. On I would the say consistency. That. Yeah. It has More, a good mouthfeel. Like, yeah, a good mouthfeel. A little bit of a syrupy mouthfeel but not overwhelming by any means do you think it needs ice or water would you drink it straight like this or would you i tend to drink my whiskey straight anyways um this one's not very harsh on the swallow which is nice very nice actually so i think it would be um appealing neat would you mix it with anything? even would you try and like make like an old-fashioned uh, or no just like a sipping whiskey, right? Yeah, it's definitely a sipping whiskey. I would agree. I, it's pretty I pleasant. Think, I don't think it would do much for an old fashioned. No, maybe, I'd... maybe no, not even a Manhattan. Yeah, I feel like it would get bowled over. It's by... not like citrusy enough, right? There's no, there's not much citrus to this at all. Yeah, I don't. It's I don't feel like it's as 
So they're saying like toffee and black cherry, vanilla, peach, apricot, melon, rose, lily. I kind of get a little bit of the floralness. I wouldn't necessarily say rose or lily. I'm not that in tune with my I'm not getting peach or apricot. Palette. No, totally. I would I would almost go towards like a What's the first thing that stood out? Almost like a The prune. oak is what stands out the most to me. Oh, yeah, like, I totally. get but vanilla, oak. yeah. Like it's kind of crazy. It's more of a scotch than it is a whiskey with the oakiness. But there's no, I mean, there's no peat but not smoke, whatsoever, yeah. and there's no like really smokiness. I'm impressed. That's pretty good. This is, is this your first Japanese whiskey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine too. So, Very first Japanese yeah. whiskey. But I mean, I can't get over how smooth it is. It is extremely smooth. Doesn't burn whatsoever. Mm -mm. Maybe just like a hint. You feel afterward. the heat, but it's not like. But I mean, it's not, not even. It's not even it's like a, a lot of heat. Yeah. yeah. It's just like a, this is a man drink. Like, this is a very <laughs> enjoyable sipping whiskey, honestly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think, I don't, if you put ice in this or even add it a water, I don't think it would change it a whole lot. Like, I think yeah, it's it pretty really, good straight up neat. I was going to say, it doesn't feel like it needs to be opened up, right? Like, it doesn't mm -mm. feel like a lot of water or anything would do any good. Mm -mm. Except chilling it down, obviously, or whatever. Yeah. Potentially watering it down. But I mean, I, it's not overly, it's not overly heat. Impressed. What would you think, like, if, so, this is really like, good. I don't remember the money. Like, let's say we'll go, we'll split it down the middle, so, like, 100 to 150, like, 125, would you pay 120 bucks for this? That's where it gets tricky, right? Mm-hmm. I honestly think it was less, though. I don't remember, guys, sorry, but, like, I picked it up at a local shop, like, right down the street from me. I swear, I, I want to say it was, like, 80 bucks. I had to guess. I can't remember. It's been a while. Sorry, and it's just been sitting on it, waiting for him to come out of town. Um, Eighty dollars. I would. I think I. I'm pretty. I'm like. I would. I would purchase that. Over a hundred. What would you get instead? If it it's was really smooth, it's just it doesn't have the fruitiness that I want it to have. If it was going to be over a hundred bucks with that price point, what well, would yeah. you? Could you recommend something around that price that would be like that you would go for instead? I can't think of anything off the top of my head besides like stuff from Buffalo Trace, you know, like yeah, anything like from those Pappy guys, like Eel Rare, or, or, yeah, Pappy. or any of that. I mean, I mean to be completely honest, there's not a lot of bourbons over. Well, and bourbon 60, and whiskey, 70 technically, can bucks, be uh, already, like a lot different, but a seven fifty. Yeah, um, yeah, even a lot of whiskeys. I mean, there really isn't. There's there's a few out there. You 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 got to get into the Scotch game before you're going to get even over a hundred dollars a bottle. Yeah, uh, and there's some pretty good scotches out there. You can get under a hundred dollars a bottle, McKellen's um, and stuff, or Oban, something Oban, like that. Yeah. But um, those are good. I, it's really good. I mean, for sixty to eighty dollar range, I would buy this all day long. I think it's a really good uh, whiskey, Japanese whiskey. See, another thing is, I haven't had any other Japanese whiskey, so I don't know if this is normal for a Japanese whiskey or if this is above average Japanese whiskey. Totally. I, I don't know. I yeah. have to compare. This might, what I, I really like it, but, but it might be comparable to other Japanese whiskeys that could be in a cheaper price range. That's, yeah, that's true. Um, that just gives an excuse to drink more. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're going to have to get some more Japanese whiskey. <laughs> the so next episode. <laughs> yeah, right. Totally. Yeah, back in Texas. Cool. All right. Well, we've enjoyed it. I think it's I think it's a successful try. That's pretty good. I would I would probably recommend it if money isn't necessarily an issue. It's kind of harder to recommend because I don't remember the exact price that I paid for it. So I guess kind of like what you're saying, if you can get it for under that hundred dollar price point, I would say both of us would probably say it's a it's worth checking out. Um, if you can get it over that hundred dollar price point, which is kind of what I was seeing online, it's kind of a if money isn't too much of an issue, check it out. They also have like a twelve year. They have a few different years. Uh, this is again the seventeen year, uh, but. I think it's pretty tasty. Like, it's definitely... Yeah, it's very good. I wouldn't say necessarily special occasion, but it's not, like, everyday either. But it's a, a good mm. sipping whiskey. You have your buddies over. You don't even have to water it down. It's, you know, you don't even need ice. No, you, you don't need ice at all for this. Drink it straight out, so... And it's, you know, in our introduction into the Japanese whiskey market, so I'm stoked to try some more offerings. This is definitely tasty, so it, it gets me in the right direction. Um... But yeah, let us know if you guys have any recommendations or anything down below. Um, we're stoked to, to have the guest on. This is the first guest of the show, so that's really, really exciting, my buddy Yaffe. Um, but yeah, until we see you again, we got another tasting or two. We'll try and get a couple more videos with this guy before he heads out of town. But until next time, thanks. Peace.